The National Investigation Agency on Sunday conducted raids in Srinagar and Anthanag in Baramulla district just a day after Jammu and Kashmir government dismissed 11 government employees from service. Nine suspects were questioned and five people have been held by the agency. The raids were carried out by the NIA on the doorstep of Umar Bhatt, who is alleged to be the face of the digital editions of a radical magazine that aimed at inciting Indian Muslims against the government. Take a look at this report coming in. Terror crackdown intensifies in Jammu and Kashmir. A multi-agency search operation underway in the valley. Joint raids by the NIA, IB, RAW and CRPF in at least 10 locations at Anantnag, Avantipura, Baramula and Srinagar. Crackdown on an ISIS module. The raids were targeted at Umar Bhatt a suspected terror operative from South Kashmir. Sources have told India today, Umar was responsible for printing Voice of Hind, a radical terror magazine that aimed to instigate minorities, especially the youth, against the country. At least five suspects have been taken into custody. And I will be uh, questioning these uh, people who are in the detention and the things which had been seized by the uh, by the NIA, they will be secluded by the NIA and finally uh, it is expected that probably some more arrests may be carried out by the NIA. This comes the day after the Union Territory Administration sacked sons of Hizbul Mujahideen Chief Sayyid Salauddin from government service. Eleven people including Sayyid Ahmed Shakil and Shahid Yusuf were terminated for collecting and distributing funds through Hawala transaction for terror activities of Hizbul Mujahideen. It's a good step. I'm going to do this. Because when people are not going to be able to do it, it's not a possibility that the militancy will be able to do it. This is a good start. 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 Sources have also told India today that the operatives were under surveillance for the past three months. The focus now shifts to getting more information about their operations and others involved. With Kamalji Kaur Sandhu in Delhi and Ashrafani in Srinagar, Bureau Report, India Today. Protests have erupted in Tamil Nadu over unconfirmed reports of the bifurcation of the state. Twitter and Facebook were flooded with posts favoring and opposing the concept of creating Kongru uh, Nadu, a, Tamil, a separate state card out of Tamil Nadu, which is from the western part of the state, including Palani, Namakal, uh, Coimbatore, and Nilgiris. The controversy erupted after BJP leader El Murugan's post went viral on social media that showed him from Kongru Nadu instead of his hometown, Namakal. Reacting to the reports, DMK leader Kani Modi claimed that Tamil Nadu cannot be divided. CPIM leader G. Balakrishnan to call the controversy absurd and blamed L. Murugan for the, uh, stoking it to get back at a controversy that erupted earlier this month over DMK referring to the central government as the union government. But BJP has indirectly extended its support for the bifurcation with BJP leader Karu Nagarajan stating that it should be discussed if this is what people wish for. <laughs> தெலுங்கானா அது போன்ற அந்த பகுதி மக்கள் என்ன விரும்புகிறார்களோ அதை நிறைவேற்ற வேண்டியது அரசின் கடமை பெரும்பான்மையின மக்களுடைய விருப்பம்தான் நம் நாட்டில் ஏற்றுக்கொள்ள ஏற்றுக்கொள்ளப்பட்ட ஒரு விஷயமாக Throwing straight across to my colleague Akshita Nandakopal, who's going to be explaining which districts fall under the Kongu Nadu belt. Over to you, Akshita. What exactly is the Kungu Belt all about? Which areas constitute this particular part of Tamil Nadu? It's essentially the Western Belt. So if there is a Kungu Nadu that's spoken about, which are the parts that will be referred to as a part of the Kungu Belt? Well, you've got a number of places, places like Parani District, Karur, all of them which are on the Western Belt. You've got uh, Dharapur, you've also got Tiruchend, uh, Tiruchend Gord, you've got Erode, 
Pollachi, Namakal districts, so all of them form the Western Belt. You've got also places like Salem, like Dharmapuri, along the entire Nilgiris, that entire sector, uh, Avinashi, Satyamangalam, Coimbatore also, and Udumalepet. These are the areas which will be a part of the Kongu part, which is considered to be a part of the Kongu belt of Tamil Nadu. And I made a lot of speculation about bifurcation. It's these areas of Tamil Nadu that will constitute a supposed Kongu Nadu. Once hailed for its containment efforts of coronavirus cases, Kerala now contributes over 30% to the active caseload in India. In the last 24 hours itself, Kerala has reported 12,220 new COVID cases and 97 fatalities, the highest in the country. The state is reporting over 10,000 cases for the sixth consecutive day. The positivity rate is over 10% in Kerala, which means 10 out of 100 people are, who are getting tested for COVID-19 are turning out to be positive. While the average positivity rate of the country is over 2% and the woes don't end here for Kerala. There are six districts in the state that are reporting over 1,000 cases in a day itself. As the third wave threat looms large over Kerala, the rising number of Zika virus cases is not helping the state either. 18 people have so far tested positive for Zika virus. Earlier, Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan downplayed the COVID situation, saying that everything is under control and that there is no need to worry about anything. But now, these numbers say otherwise. The annual Rath Yatra is underway in Odisha's temple town, Puri, amidst the strict COVID curbs. The Rath Yatra festival is associated with Lord Jagannath. Like last year, Rath Yatra is being taken out without devotees and only temple officials are allowed to attend and pull the chariots of the Trinity, Bhagwan Jagannath, Balabhadra and Devi Subhadra. Under the COVID guidelines, only negative COVID report people are allowed to enter this particular event. Servitors attending the rituals were subject to RT-PCR tests and only negative ones were allowed in Sri Mandir Temple Complex. The Supreme Court had uh, put a stamp of approval on Odisha government's decision to allow Rath Yatra only at the main Jagannath Temple of Odisha. Prime Minister also greeted countrymen saying that we bow to Lord Jagannath and pray that his blessings bring good health and prosperity in everyone's lives. Amidst the fear of third wave of coronavirus, a large number of tourists are visiting the lake city of Nenital without any fear, flouting COVID norms. In most places in Nenital, tourists were roaming about without masks, not practicing social distancing norms. Experts fear that the third wave of the virus will harm children, but the most, but kids appeared in the crowded areas without masks too. District administration has enforced new, new rules to control the traffic in which 35 kilometers before Nenital in Katkodam and Bhova stickers are being pasted on vehicles going towards the lake city and they're being sent through different routes a fine of 500 rupees is also being imposed on those who are not wearing masks <laughs> More than 60 people in northern India have been killed by dozens of lightning strikes. Thunderstorms caused by widespread damage to trees and properties. Prime Minister Modi expressed grief over the deaths of at least 20 people due to lightning strikes in several districts of Rajasthan on Sunday. The Prime Minister to Twitter expressed his deepest condolences to the families of the deceased. Amongst the dead, 11 were from Jaipur, 3 from Dholpur, 4 from Kota, 1 from Baran. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Ashok Gehloth has also announced excratia of 5 lakh rupees each for the kin of the deceased. Not only Rajasthan, but the lightning has killed several in Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh as well. At least 41 people lost their lives in different parts of Uttar Pradesh. Maximum deaths were reported from Prayagraj.
We're slipping to a very short commercial break here on India Today, but before we go, take a look at these visuals. A dog in China can be seen running on a treadmill and performing stretching exercises. This adorable dog is an Alaskan Malamute breed, known for its strength and endurance to haul heavy freight. Mm -hmm. A lot of emphasis has been given to working out at home during the lockdown in order to stay fit and healthy and strengthen one's immunity. The dog and its owner seem to be taking it to the heart.